Here we go. Right. Oh. We're back. Yeah. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Never yeah. know which camera to look at. We'll look at all of them. Yeah. Well, except for that one because I can't see me. Yeah. Hope you're good. Uh, we're down a mic. We are here to talk to you about your fitness business yeah. and give you the advice that you need to hear. Um, not that you want to hear, unfortunately, because there's enough people out there selling you that shit on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, posing with crap cars, rented clothing. Uh, which you can do now, apparently, which I find very strange. Yeah, um, you can do and that. All that uh, and all the watches. I ain't got a watch. I don't I know have, what time it is. I have to ask Mike for the time, but usually I'm working because he's making me work, so it's fine. Doesn't I don't need to know the time, apparently. It's um, wrong anyway. That's time to work, he fine. says. You know. Time to work, and that's what you say? Time to work, yeah. That's what you say? It's time to work. <laughs> So what are we talking about today, Michael? Hang on, I need to do my part yet. Oh, yeah. uh, I th- I th- you just hope- haven't done it for the last like three videos, so oh. I just assumed you'd just stop doing it. I hope loads of people are watching. You're not. Uh, we can see the numbers. It's quite clear. Yeah, you're not sharing it. So yeah, share it. Um, stop keeping it your day little secret, you yeah. know? It's filthy, seedy. Share us. Share the love. Pass it around. Yeah. Um, there you go. Are we go. Right, now we're in then. Now what are we talking about? So no, today no. we're going to talk about... Mike put up a poll on his Instagram and a question he asked his audience of 10,000 people, would you believe? You can't believe it. That's it. 10, Unbelievable. He paid me to say that. Um, is he, he put a poll up and he said, would you rather have £10,000 income and £5,000 expenses or £5,000 income and zero expenses? So for those of you out there who can do maths like me, um, it works out roughly the same in theory. But Mike was quite surprised by the results. Well, I was quite surprised by the results. But I, then I, I remembered what his audience are like and how stupid they are. Stupid. So it made sense that, stupid. you know, it, was, it makes sense why he's got 10,000 of you following him because he's an idiot himself. But um, Just jealous. What is the outcome there, Mike? Why, why are they not the same? And which one should we be looking at? So, yeah, we, we, put, this, we put this up because, and this was, um, this, this was because, had a lot of people, well, it was, a, it was actually because of a console that I had, which I think I'll go into. Yeah, I'm going to go into it. Uh, it was a con. It was off the back of a consult that I had, and then after talking about this consult on Instagram, I then had numerous people. I'm not going to say hundreds. That'd two. be a lie. Yeah, two. No, it was probably between about ten and fifteen um, that came forward and said, "Actually, this has happened to me, and this is what this certain mentor is teaching, and the certain certain things around it." So let me just go into the sales call first to to kind of explain. So the sales call came about. With a Mike, guy. Mike was trying to make him cry. He was, he was telling him he's got like, take out three credit cards. Cries, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. Have you got that. PayPal? <laughs> yeah, 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 anything, anything. Apple Pay. Um, I'll come around to your house. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, um, from the outside, looked successful. Um, in was in a current me- uh, mentorship, in the process of leaving it, but he'd been in it multiple years. Almost a bit of a poster boy for it. Goes to all the events. Been given a trophy. Sword? <laughs> is that specific? <laughs> it's you quite specific. Said it now. A spoon. Big dagger. What? Did you big, know, it was a something. It was knife. just a knife. Cut, he cut, was cutting it with it. Yeah. He, yeah. A long one. Just a really long knife. From Master Chef. He was. It's Master. You might yeah. Master Chef. That's what. Um, it was. So anyway, six-figure business owner getting on the call. Obviously, you know when someone comes in and apparently they're doing this well, you think, okay, why? why you know, what do you need help with? Mm. It became apparent that uh, he was actually not on. Well, he what he technically earned six figures, but his recurring revenue was at five thousand pounds a month. His expenses were nine thousand pounds a month. So he actually had a six figure recurring expenses account as well. Yes. He did. <laughs> so what he was having to do is to make up the shortfall between five and nine. He was having to sell up from packages nine nine seven for three months, obviously. Um, and he was doing that, and he had been doing that. And on average, he was taking around 12K in total, which is a great, again. But the anxiety, imagine the anxiety, the stress um, of having to sell those packages, knowing that you've got nine grand of expenses coming out, and you've only got five recurring. If you have a particularly bad month selling, something happens, uh, just say you can't work, you can't be on Instagram, your Instagram gets hacked, and you can't sell, you've got five grand recurring coming in from your current clients and 9,000 expenses. So, yes, he was selling the... Now, I know Mike's not great at maths, but I think even he can work out that that is... Sign off. Doesn't cover it. It's a minus number. Yeah. Doesn't cover it. Um, So, there's the anxiety of that. But it's the fact of this whole... He'd average about 12K a month over the year. Looks great. And now what we would expect somebody earning 12K to look like would be, okay, that's pretty comfortable. They're secure. They're safe. You know, they can afford a couple of bad months. The business isn't going to get whipped out underneath them. They can probably afford a mortgage. They can cover their bills. 
pretty good. Not when you've got nine grand of expenses. You, you can't. Because you're then only taking home £3,000. And then you don't know how much of that £3,000 you can actually spend because next month you've still only got £5,000 recurring and you've got nine grand coming out of it. So that's stability, security that you're aiming to get from earning, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten k, eleven, twelve k, whatever. You actually don't get when you've got your business set up that way. And unfortunately, that's the way that mentors are teaching people to do it. There's a phrase that they're using: "You have to pay to play." Wow. Well. Yeah, you don't. Um, you don't. But what they're teaching is you need to invest in, funnily enough, other businesses that they've got a kickback from. Funny that. Um, be it a VA company, be it a set, set, setter and closer company, a sales team or whatever. Be it a therapist. Um, just, I guess. And, uh, what um, is it? The other one was the, uh, the, the men- mental coach, mental performance or something. There's all sorts of stuff. Is that all, what they're calling it these days? All, all sorts of stuff. Therapy, same thing. All of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but they're basically telling people to ramp stuff up. And of course, if you've got somebody, a VA, for example, doing eight hours of work, you're going to book more calls. Cool. You're going to get more people in. Hands down, of course you will. If you've got a professional sales team, you're going to get sales made. Of course you are. Not disputing that. But what happens is you're paying through the nose for them when you could actually be doing it yourself. And... What happens is, is that because they've been sourced by a VA and closed by a closer, a sales guy, they're probably not the best type of client. They drop off in two or three months. They don't get you a result. They don't get you the recurring revenue over time. They're probably not going to give you a referral. And ultimately, you don't like working with this type of person. So it's fundamentally the wrong thing to be happening within your business. Fundamentally. Yet, that's what business mentors are teaching people to do because the shiny number goes oh, this guy's making 12K a month, looks great for the mentor, they get the screenshot, he's making 12K a month, he's done six figures, he's got his sword, dagger, knife, long knife, great, everything's rosy, but you don't see the internal workings, the pressure, the stress, the fact that the business has not run how it should be. So, in an industry where you only need an internet connection and a laptop to run it, your business should be much, much leaner than what these mentors are telling you to do. So after the back of that consult, and I went on Instagram and spoke about it, I had somebody said that he did 100 grand a year. And he was like, I couldn't work out why I was always skin. And when I worked out my expenses, when it came to pay my tax for the year, I'd had 80 grand of expenses. <sighs> That's a lot. And he said, since then, I've basically changed. I now earn about £4,000 recurring, and I feel a lot better. Mm. No. It's only 4,000 now. He's only 100 grand. You're not. And we'll explain why there's a difference there. Um, uh. So do you want to talk about the difference in terms of that? Well, yeah, so like, so, like so, so straight away, just on those numbers, like just 12,000 a month as an average, let's just say, and then the 9,000 expenses. It... It, it sounds like, oh, okay, he's got three grand left, which sounds great. Like you, you said there, it's like, okay, take home three grand. Well, you're not taking home three grand for a start. Forgetting VAT for a second here, when you earn that much money, even just at, four, just a, just at 40% tax, you're going to be taking home, um, what's that, 1,800 out of that, 80, 1,800 quid, which you could probably take home doing nearly any other job. Like you don't need to be earning, you know, six figures and going through the pain of it all. But the key thing that no one is talking about, and I cannot believe that no one is talking about it here, and we talk about it a lot with the people we work with. Like we've got multiple clients who are doing above 10, 12, 13, 14, K, you know, K months and stuff like that. Like we just don't fucking put it all over the place because it's not important. What's important is they've got a business that they want, that they've set up properly and that they're, that they're happy with. Because I've got clients as well who haven't gone above that for the very reason they don't want to deal with the VAT and all the stress that comes with it. They just want a you know, happy life. If you go over 85,000 pounds in a year turnover, you trigger VAT, you have to then register for VAT. Now, I reckon there's probably plenty of people dodging it. They don't even need to know they need to register for it because, fuck me, there's no one talking about this. You have to do it. As a one-man band, sole trader business, You, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're that or you're Coca-Cola, you're paying it. You have to register for it, you have to pay it. And there's a few schemes involved in all this sort of shit, but like VAT is at 20%. There's, you can get it slightly lower, but let's assume that people aren't smart enough to do that and you have to pay 20%. It does, the government don't care what your expenses are. On that £12,000 a month, they are owed 20% of that. They're owed 20% of it, VAT. 
you have to give that. So that's two and a half grand. Two and a half grand, pretty much, is for VAT. And so when people talk about businesses and they go, I'll ramp up your expenses because you can claim it back against your business so you pay less tax. Not a VAT, no. It's not on profit. Your tax is done on profit, yeah? So if income you were... Tax. Your income tax is done on profit. Um, so it's corporation tax as well if you're a limited company. Um, but then you have to worry about your personal tax dividends and stuff like this. And again, it's why I don't recommend many people want doing this sort of job go to be a limited company because it just gets really fucking complicated and doesn't work out that much better. With VAT you are screwed and you it gets triggered once you go over that amount and it's hard to then not pay it. And not only that, you have to pay it every three months. You have to pay that every three months. So you have one bad month and you can't pay a VAT bill. Do you think the, gov- do you think the tax ban goes, oh, don't worry about it. Just, just pay back when you can. No, no. They get the money and they come for it. And like Mike's saying there, so you've got 10K, the, the, the example was 10K income, 5K expensive. We worked it out that I think it was that you would take home £1,200 less, was it, a month? That person? It, it was... After taxes? It was £20,000 across the year. Yeah. So Unbelievable. So it's about it's about that. I think. So, 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 so are the, t- the two um, examples... So the two examples were... The, it the, feels the, like the, the they're number, both the same. It feels like the, that you get 5K, but because of that and because of the VAT of tax and because of the higher threshold at which you, you earn money, you pay fuck loads more tax. And like Mike's saying there, but you then also got the the monthly anxiety of paying the 5k expenses every month and on top of that every three months the, the VAT bill that's going to come through which is going to be on that amount of money is every three months is going to be what 100k 20 it's going to be 5,000 pound every every three months I so these people have got to sell all this money up front they've got to do all this sort of stuff and this is the other thing about recurring revenue is it's predictable and you can see what's happening so if you see yourself slowly building up over time you can see and you get to that 7,000 a month number that gets you to 84,000 in a year, which keeps you below the threshold. The other thing about this, again, no one's talking about, and I can't understand why no one's talking about it, is that with VAT, it is triggered over any 12-month rolling period. So if you have two amazing months where you'd sell loads of upfront packages and they are 11 months apart, and within the middle of that, you just get a decent amount in, but it triggers over 85, 86,000, technically, you should be registering for VAT. Even if the month after that, it goes lower again, Right, and it, and that that other month then rolls out of it out of those twelve months. Technically, you should be doing that, and technically they could come for you, and technically they could demand the VAT. And I, d- I just think there's there's just a lot of coaches that are so unaware of this, and they see the upfront packages. and And I've had conversations with a couple of clients recently who've who've started to go over that threshold. And as we talked about before, is that you have to jump over that number to get your recurring revenue from seven. You have to go from seven to about ten to make the same amount of money. Yep. So. With the people we work with, if you want to do that, we say, right, we need a con- contingency plan to go. How are we going to go from seven to 10? Because you can't just like go over it a little bit because you're fucked. You're, you're better earning seven than you are nine. Technically. Mental. From from that point of view. So, and I know the arguments are going to, I know the arguments from people would be, yeah, but with those expenses, you have more opportunity to grow. Like you can do more calls. You Like you said, you can book more calls. You can get more people booked in. Of course you can. But you have to do the front-end work to get that. So if your followers aren't growing and your social media's not growing, you're not putting out great content and you're not connecting with people and not having a good relationship with them, then your following's not going to grow. And I would argue that then those people who follow you, who build those relationships because of no like, and trust, then when they find out that it's not you on the call and that it's not you that's been in the DMs messaging them, how are they going to feel once they're in the program when they're speaking to you? And three months in, like you say, they're not actually as bought in as they could have been if they actually knew that they were speaking to you. Yeah. Um, so there's, 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 and as a business, obviously you're going to have to at some point grow to that point. But I think people drastically underestimate how much money they need to get to that point. Sorry, over, is it over, overestimate. Like we don't have anyone doing our calls. Like when people pick up the phone, they're like, oh, it's you, it's you. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course it's us. We're here. Yeah. Like, of course it is. There's no VA. It's and, I th- and I find it baffling that, like we've actually just gone for a period where we've pulled our expenses down a bit because we have a little bit more time now mm-hmm. to, to do other things that we wanted to do. Um, and they may ramp back up again in the future, but... I just find it so odd that people are, we talked about this on one of our recent members calls, is clients, uh, coaches are trying to automate tasks that they can't even do money themselves yet. There's this thing around, get someone else to do the sales course. You can't even do them yourself yet. If you can't do them yourself, like you, again, I find it baffling that people are just rushing to that. Learn how to do it. Learn how to get good at yeah. it. And if you think it's because you're not good at doing it, how everyone else has taught you, maybe there's a different way. Mm-hmm. Because people, I don't like sales calls historically, never did. And then as soon as we started doing them differently, we learned a better way of doing it. All of a sudden, okay, that's quite comfortable. And we get it with all our coaches as well. The members group, if you're in the members group, you get access to that video. So go watch it. Um, BB members. Uh, message us BB members on, on Instagram. Um, and, and it's, and it's, 
it's not as hard and as scary as you think it is, but it's made out to be that way by these mentors so that they can sell you their setter and take a percentage so that you then need them. Do you know what I mean? Like it's all part of a big, I don't want to say conspiracy, but it's all part of a big plan to get yeah. you to spend more money with them. Yep to make it sound confusing so that yep. you need them. And we're telling you, it's not that confusing. You don't need them and that you can do this. We've got loads of people doing it. Um, us included. Us included, and we're so, idiots. So, so that, that's the thing is that they will tell you, you need this, you need a VA, you need a sales team, you need this. Yeah, don't we're, you want more time back in your business? Like, you've got say, 15 clients. Like, what do you need more time back for? Exactly. Where it's say you don't need it. And we don't get any money for saying that you don't need it. We don't get any kickback. Who do you think has probably got the, the interest in the best place? The one who gets the kickback off the sales team, the VA, the fucking therapist, whatever, videographer, the one who's got the cahoots, the percentage, the referral scheme with one another, or the people that go, well, we don't have a VA, we don't have a sales team, without going you know, too much into the numbers, we do okay for ourselves. Like, we've got 85% profit margins, which is healthier than some people. I've seen some mentors screaming about their clients going, ah, oh, they've got a healthy 60% profit margin. Is that healthy? When all you need is a laptop and an internet connection? Is 60% profit margin healthy when, you, when you've got 30 clients? Well, yeah, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? Is it's the client numbers. And I think that a lot of these mentors, what they're doing is they're, they're teaching people business, right? And that's their argument, I would imagine, would be this is how you create a business. Because you could argue, again, like just playing devil's advocate, that you with a laptop and internet connection isn't a business. It's just you doing, doing coaching and you doing check-ins. And you, if you removed yourself from the business, it would all crumble, right? Which I get. And that is a valid, valid argument. It would still but, crumble though, even if you said so. Well, well, exactly, yeah. It was still, the one coaching. It would still crumble. So yeah, because of the coaching element. Yeah. So they're saying like, oh, you automate all these tasks. You get someone else to do it. You're running a business now. And I would argue that until you're coaching upward of 100, 150 clients, 200 clients in your business, you don't need to be running it like a business. This is a personal brand. This is you coaching. This is you turning up. If you don't turn up with that laptop, with a setter, with a VA, with all the, you know, your, your therapist, with all these people on board you still won't make any money. So until you can remove yourself completely from the business, it's not really like a business that they're trying to sell you with all these people, employees and stuff like that. And you made a great point. You were like, what's the point of having four employees? Because technically they are, and the wages that people are paying, there are employees. Um, when you've got 15 clients. 15 clients, four employees. The, the, How does that make any sense? Like, like you've just said there, at some point you do have to delegate or outsource work, push do, to, to make it a business and to start to take a step back. But it's much, much later than what they're telling you to do. They're oh. telling you to do it, to make it feel like there's something missing, to make it feel like you're running a business. And because they it's, are financially financially and, and, benefiting from and it. And it's hugely later on, is in to the point where you just said then about like the income and the expenses and all this sort of stuff. Like, trust me here, because I know people doing it, you should be I, I, upwards, and I'm, I'm just going to throw a random number out here because it, it's, it's upwards of this number, definitely, but call it this number. After tax and after your expenses and after all that sort of stuff, if you're clearing 10K a month, you could probably look into it. You could probably look into it around that sort of number. Until you get to that point, it really isn't anything you need to worry about. You can, you've got enough time. You've got enough everything to do it before then. Trust me, you've got enough time. So think about it like that. Don't think about the revenue number you need to get to or all that sort of stuff. When you're comfortably taking home into your clearing after tax, all that sort of stuff, about that money, you could then start going, hmm, what tasks do I hate and could I give to someone else that they could do for me? Believe me, up to that point, you just do not need to stress or worry about it. In, in my, again, my opinion, that number's just poked out of thin air, but use it as a guide. It could be a little bit lower, could be loads higher. But the point is that a lot of these mentors are using their revenues as numbers. They're posting revenues all over the place. I don't give a shit what businesses' revenues are. I don't give a shit because we've had enough calls with people to say, yeah, my revenue looks great, but you I fucking shit. hate what I'm doing. And you profit. And you profit shit. And you got no money. Like, what's the point? What are you doing this for? To look good on someone else's Stripe screenshot that they're posting on their Instagram or to sit there and look at what you're doing in your life and go, actually, I feel quite good. I feel quite comfortable. I know what's coming in. I haven't got anxiety around stuff. Um, I'll keep going. It just baffles me, absolutely baffles me. And, and, and no one's talking about it, no one. I don't see any, any people in the mentor space talking about tax and VAT. They don't talk about the shit side of it. No. They don't talk about the expense they side of it. They won't, because that, that doesn't sell their mentorship. They only talk about, oh, investing in things. Oh, you've got to invest in it. Well, no, that's an expense, isn't it? It's an investment, yeah, but it is an expense. But they don't talk about the taxes. They don't talk about thinking about the taxes. We're a bit more boring, maybe. But we're realistic, because we know, because we've been there. And we've been in that position when you get a tax bill through and you can comfortably pay it and you go, this is all right. Don't worry. It's annoying. But you go, oh, it's fine. 
imagine that when it rolls around. Because I, I had a, again, I had another consultation just last week and someone said, oh, I can't really join them because I've just had a big tax bill. Well, how are you running your business then? Because that shouldn't affect anything. Mm -hmm. Because that should have been saved up ages ago and put aside ages ago and planned for ages ago. That doesn't, shouldn't affect your decision to invest in your business at any point in time. You know, think about it like that. And people aren't. People will, will, you know, when it gets to the end of January, they worry. They're sitting there going, fucking hell, I'm going to do this. Now imagine you had a VAT bill every three months <laughs> to do the same thing with. Yeah. You know, it's, it's mad. But we'll talk about it because no one else is. So keep your business as lean as you possibly can until the point where you're, you're, whether it's an arbitrary number like that or whatever, the point is you need to be absolutely full to bust in. And if, even then, do you know what I'd do? I'd, I'd probably bring on a coach instead. We, we, yeah. We, we, do you know what we could do? We probably could do a YouTube video on this: how to employ somebody that actually doesn't cost you an expense, because mm -hmm. that's what it is. There you go. There's the next YouTube video. There you go. There's your little juicy dangle. Oh, stay, stay for next week. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Next we'll week. leave it there. We're filming it now, so. But yeah, we're filming yeah. it now. Um, but yeah, have a good one. Hope you good. Subscribe. Oh, oh we damn it. it! Subscribe. Just subscribe, will you? God yeah. damn it! Um, and then uh, yeah, we get nothing for that, but it just makes us look good, and um, all we care about is our ego. So hit subscribe. Cool. Yeah, follow us on Instagram as well. Do that. Please. Yeah. I need more because he's got more than me now.